We are feeding the community. We are feeding the first responders. We are feeding our linemen that are restoring all power to our community. We also have converted four donation centers, and that's all opened up for donations back to the community. All of this is basically intended to just bring that little piece of comfort to the families from around the region. Well, that's a bit of what the Knights of Columbus says it's all about. But the Catholic social and charitable organization that was founded in 1882 is under fire from at least two Democratic senators. Maisie Hirono of Hawaii and Kamala Harris of California have been grilling an Omaha-based lawyer who's a nominee to sit on a district court in Nebraska about his membership in that Catholic charity group. Hirono says the Knights of Columbus have, quote, a number of extreme positions, asking nominee Brian Boucher if he could hear cases fairly or if he was intending to leave the organization if he actually got a seat confirmed on the bench. Boucher says his involvement with the Knights of Columbus consists mostly of charitable work and community events, and he's not backing down. So let's bring in the Reverend Gerald Murray, pastor of the Holy Family Catholic Church for some analysis. Father, welcome. Great to have you with us. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, so listen, some of the concerns that these uh, uh, senators have, they say uh, the Knights of Columbus has taken positions on abortion and marriage. They say are extreme and out of the mainstream. Um, they also say he's called himself pro-life. Is it fair to ask questions about whether or not he can be an objective judge? No, I look at this as an attack on the Catholic Church because the Knights of Columbus as a Catholic organization promotes Catholic teaching about the matter of it's immoral to kill children and marriage consists of a man and a woman. Those are not extreme positions. Those are truths that were taught by law and culture for most of Western history until quite recently. It's not fair to say if you are a member of a Catholic organization, you're an extremist because we don't have religious tests in the United States. We respect religion. You may not agree with someone's religion, but don't then say to him, it's illegitimate for you to uphold those positions that you're teaching is extreme. No, Catholicism is not extreme. Their attacks are extreme. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because there are those who, who take this a step further and say it's not just about um, having a faith, it's about actually practicing it. And that's where some of these questions, and we've seen it with other nominees over the last year or two, have been really pushed on whether or not they actually adhere to the Bible or the tenets of their faith. Um, Bill Donahue, you know well, um, president of the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights, says this in writing an op-ed. He said, Senators Harris and Hirono are playing a game. They're engaged in selective religious profiling and sexism. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor was not considered a problem with these senators, yet she is Catholic. But she's also reliably pro-abortion. End of story. Is it more about the issue it is. I think this is a replay of the uh, Judge Kavanaugh uh, debate that was had, which is basically to say abortion, as dictated by Roe v. Wade, is an unassailable position in American life, and anyone who criticizes it is an extremist. And the Catholic Church says, no, abortion involves the killing of an unborn children, and decent people don't believe that that's right, and they should be able to advocate in a free society for laws to bring that into legal force in the country. It really is a shame that the motives of people such as this proposed judge in Nebraska are impugned because they're religious people. Religious people are called upon when there's a disaster, and the Knights do a lot of that disaster relief, and everybody's happy when they show up at the border, at a fire, or at an explosion. But if they happen to say, well, by the way, we also believe what the church teaches about human life and marriage, well, suddenly they're called extremists and they're said, get out of here. That, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and to that point, I want to read something from the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, writing an open letter urging vote against this uh, man and says, based on his track record of part of his partisan activism and deep-seated hostility to LGBTQ equality and reproductive freedom, Mr. Boucher would be incapable of serving as a fair and neutral arbiter. He should not be confirmed for a lifetime appointment to the federal judiciary. That sparks the question for me, too, if there are people of other faiths outside of Catholicism, Protestant Christianity, uh, evangelical Christians. Would people of other faiths, do you think, get these same kinds of questions on Capitol Hill? Well, <clears throat> I haven't heard that. You know, Muslim members of Congress who were recently elected, uh, their religion teaches that marriage is only between a man and a woman, and they also don't endorse abortion. No one's calling or uh, saying, though, you know, the Muslim faith may, makes you uh, in incapable of serving as a legislator, let alone a judge. No, I think in this country the experience is that religious people who follow the Constitution and discharge their judicial functions are good, decent, and honorable. 
Uh, according to these senators, every practicing Catholic should quit the bench because they're extremists. That's all, that's wrong. If you want to defend abortion, make your arguments. Don't attack people who think abortion is wrong. Well, and this judge has assured them that no matter what happens, if he is confirmed, he will adhere to precedent. He will uh, not go rogue. He will do what is his duty as a judge and be impartial in all cases that come before him. Father Murray, thanks for joining us on this conversation tonight. Thank you, Shannon.